What's up, everybody? I'm Adam from K6ARK Portable Radio, and in the spirit of Two Meter Night from Monday Night Ham Radio, today we're going to talk about how to pick the perfect antenna for your HT. Stay tuned. This is the entire station that I'm going to try activating with today. Uh, also, it's 10 Rock Might set up. Any other stations out there? K6ARK. All right, I'm going to give you the spoiler up front. The reality is that there's no perfect antenna. Every antenna is a trade off in some form or another. And in this video, we're going to talk about how you can assess those different competing factors that exist in every antenna, the different sort of electrical designs that you're going to see in HT antennas, and the different mechanical designs. And then we'll go through each of those considerations and figure out how they may play into picking which one is going to work best for you. Now, one thing you got to understand is that every antenna, not just HT antennas, HF as well, has three competing factors that uh, really address its performance and mechanical design. Number one is size. Two, efficiency or gain. And three, multiband functionality or bandwidth. You're not going to get optimization of all three of those things in one antenna. So typically, for example, if you have a smaller antenna, it's gonna have more limited bandwidth, less bands to work with, and or it's going to be less efficient and have less gain. If you want an antenna that's multi-band or has high gain, you're going to be stuck with a larger antenna. So keep those considerations in mind as we talk through some of the options here. So HT antennas that mount onto the radio come in three typical mechanical designs. The first is the rubber duck antenna. These are the most common ones that we see coming on the HT from the factory. They're typically four to maybe eight or nine inches in length and about a quarter to a half inch in diameter. They're constructed from a helical coil of wire inside that black outer sheath, oftentimes on a plastic form or something in there to give it some stiffness or rigidity so it doesn't just fall apart, get beat up. And then with uh, a rubberized coating on the outside, kind of like a heat shrink coating. Some of them are multi-band, others are mono-band, and because of the limited size, the performance is usually a little bit subpar. The other mechanical design you see in HT antennas that you mount onto the radio are what I call whip antennas. These are antennas like the Signal Stick or the Diamond SRH77 series antennas. They're typically about 19 inches long, which is a quarter wave on two meters, and rather than a helical coil of wire, they're just a single straight piece of wire that makes that element. They're typically very flexible, pretty durable because of that, but they're a bit longer and more unwieldy. The third mechanical design of antennas we see out there are telescopic whip antennas. Telescopic whips are made of stainless steel cylindrical elements that nest inside each other and can be compressed down for storage and extend it out for use. Some of those antennas are up to 5 eighths of a wavelength long, so 48 inches or so, and that's obviously something you wouldn't want to carry fully extended. So the telescopic nature of it makes it an, an antenna that you can actually carry and use. Now these telescopic whip antennas are much less durable than the others. Because of the telescoping sections, they have much more fragile joints and junctions in there and you have to be pretty careful uh, extending and retracting those antennas to make sure you don't damage them. That said, when they're fully extended, that larger radiating element gives you a much better performance. So in addition to the mechanical design, it's worthwhile to also consider the electrical design of the antenna. Vertical antennas like that come in typically three different electrical designs. The first and probably most common is the quarter wave vertical. Quarter wave antennas are relatively small, they perform relatively well, and although they need a ground plane, uh, they can get by with a somewhat compromised ground plane that you're going to end up with an HT. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. The second electrical design that you're going to see in HT antennas that mount onto the HT is the half wave antenna. 
half-wave antennas are fed at a voltage maximum and a current minimum, and as a result, they don't really require any ground plane to perform well. So half-wavelength antennas actually work quite well on HTs. The third electrical design you'll see in HT antennas is the 5 8 wave. 5 8 wave monopole antennas give you pretty good omnidirectional gain, but the trade-offs are a larger size and the need for a better ground plane. So you'll find that these antennas sometimes don't perform quite as well as you think they should, just because the ground plane on an HT is not very good. So we've talked about ground planes a couple of times. What is the ground plane in a handheld radio? Well, it's comprised of a couple of things. First, you've got the chassis of the radio, which is, you know, a decent chunk of metal, but still much smaller than a quarter wavelength on two meters, you know, 19 inches or so in length, when the average HT is maybe six or seven inches long. So what actually happens when you're using an HT is that you become part of the ground plane. When your hand is holding on to that radio, the capacitive coupling between you and the radio turns you into part of that ground plane. It helps that antenna perform better. It doesn't affect you negatively in any way. So for some of those antennas, the quarter wave, and especially for a 5 8 wave antenna, it can help to add to that ground plane. There's something you may have heard of called a tiger tail or a counterpoise that you can attach to that base of the antenna, to the ground side of it, which can really help expand that ground plane and make the antenna perform better. Another thing you may find is that the antennas that come with some of the higher end handheld radios may actually perform better than a larger antenna, even though it's a small rubber duck. Some of those antennas were designed specifically to work with those radios, and they actually end up performing quite well on multiple bands despite the smaller size. So we talked about antennas mounted to the radio. What about antennas that are mounted off of the radio and simply attached via coax? A couple of great options for portable operations are the roll-up J-pole, which is essentially an end-fed half-wave antenna, and the extended double zep, one of my favorites for summits on the air operation. The extended double zep is uh, basically a collinear 5 8 wave antenna, two 5 8 wave antennas end to end. Both of those antennas are great performers. Really, anytime you can get the antenna off of the radio and up higher, you're going to have better results. With VHF and UHF operation, height is might. Now, roll-up J-pole antennas are cheap to buy and easy to build, and the extended double zep is also quite easy to build. You know, I think I'll have to make a video on that one coming up here soon, so stay tuned for that. Both the roll-up J-pole and the extended double zep are wire antennas, so you have to hang them from something. If you've got trees nearby, you can use a tree branch and string it up from that, or another option is to use a telescopic pole. Be cautious with carbon fiber poles because the con slightly conductive nature of the pole may impact the resonance of the antenna and kind of throw it off and mess up your radiation pattern too. Now the last thing to consider with off-radio antennas is the feed line. We know that with VHF and UHF frequencies, feed lines are pretty lossy and inefficient. So consider using a higher quality feed line, carry a little bit of extra weight if that feed line run is going to be very long, and whenever you can, really just minimize that length of coax. If you're concerned, look up an online coax loss calculator and figure out how much of your power you're gonna be losing to that length of coax. Now everything we've talked about so far is an omnidirectional antenna, which means it radiates equally in, in all directions out away from you. Sometimes you want to focus your antenna's energy in a single direction to maximize your gain and really optimize that distance and performance. Now I recently put out a video on a design and build for a 3 element 2 meter 70 centimeter Yagi. The link for the video is right up there, check it out. And there are other commercial options as well. The Aero antenna is one of them, and the Elk antenna is another. The typical designs you'll see are either Yagi Uda antennas or log periodic antennas. Yagis tend to be monobanded unless you have multiple elements or kind of special designs like, uh, like I came up with for mine. And log periodic antennas typically have a much broader bandwidth but require more elements and are, are a little bit more complex because of it. 
Both are fantastic performers, and one of the cool advantages of that, especially if it's a dual-band antenna, is the opportunity to work satellites, cross-band, 2-meter, 70-centimeter satellite repeaters. ARK, K6 ARK, Delta Mike 1 3, your call again, please. Alpha Charlie 9, Delta Mike 0 3. Alpha Charlie 9 again. Alpha Charlie 9 Ocean. Alpha Charlie 9 Ocean, thank you, 7 3. So be sure to check those out if you're interested in that. Now, with those directional antennas, you're also going to be optimizing the performance of your system. From a good high mountaintop, you might be able to reach out 200 plus miles with two meters with an antenna like that. K6 DFB. Kilo 6 Quebec, Bravo. Uh, K6 QCB, stand by one. K6 DSB, you're 5'9. Five 5'9 nine. Five nine up here on Queen Maca Peak, over. Uh, you're also a strong signal into Santa Barbara this morning. Uh, K6 DSB, 73. Try it out, it's a heck of a lot of fun. So let's talk about a few of my favorite HT antennas and why they're my favorites. The first on the list might be a surprise to you. It's this little guy. This is the stock rubber duck that came with this little Yaesu VX3R. I've been using this thing for years and have made hundreds of contacts on it. The performance is actually fantastic for an antenna this size. I can only assume that Yaesu optimized the design of this little antenna for the size and, and, and chassis of this radio, so it works well with this, this tiny little radio. I've made contacts over 100 miles on this thing with just half a watt out of this radio. It's quite amazing. So before you just dump that stock antenna that came with your HT, particularly if it's from one of the higher end manufacturers, try it out and compare it to some of the other antennas you might be using. You very well may find that it's a, a high performing antenna. The next favorite I want to mention is the Diamond SRH77CA. Now you can see that this is not the smallest antenna. It's a top performer on 70 centimeters and it's a quarter wave vertical on 2 meters so it performs pretty well on 2 meters too. The drawback is when I've got the radio and a chest harness with this on it and the antenna is constantly in my field of view, sometimes almost poking me in the eye. It's, it can be, become a bit annoying. So that's one of those ergonomic features that uh, might preclude you from using an antenna like this. I really like to use this antenna when my radio is simply mounted in a backpack, uh, sticking out the back, and I've got a, a handheld microphone to operate the radio. The third one I want to mention is a telescopic whip half-wave antenna from a local company here in San Diego called Smiley Antennas. Smiley makes fantastic antennas of a variety of shapes and sizes and mechanical designs and electrical designs as well. And this one is one of my favorites because it's a half-wave antenna. And as I mentioned before, these half-wave antennas don't require a ground plane and they perform really well on an HT without it. Of course, this is telescopic. It extends out to, oh, 30 something inches here. Uh, so it's a very large antenna. This is not something you're gonna be carrying around fully extended. But from a mountaintop, this thing is a top performer. Uh, it works really better than any antenna I've ever used that mounts onto a radio. MFJ makes a very similar antenna that I'll link in the comments below. It's the 1714, AKA the Long Ranger. And it's a fantastic antenna. Go check them out. So we talked about the competing factors that affect every antenna, size, bandwidth or multiband functionality and efficiency or gain. And then we talked about how we need to balance those and make our selections wisely by first understanding our priorities with respect to bands that we need, desired performance and ergonomic considerations. Odds are, like me, you're gonna end up with a whole bunch of different HT antennas from rubber ducks to telescopic whips, maybe a Yagi or two, and probably a wire antenna that you can hang in a tree. And they all serve different purposes, so having a quiver of options like that can really help you out to give you the right option when you're going out for some portable operations. So tell me in the comments below what some of your favorite antennas are. I want to hear what works for you and why. So I hope you all learned something from this video that'll help you pick your next HT antenna and get the one that's gonna work best for you. Post in the comments below any questions you might have. 
I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as possible. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Adam from K6ARK Portable Radio, saying 7-3.